What's up everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to turn an old or thrifted sweater into a pair of jogger sweats. So here is an example of the sweater I turned into a pair of jogger sweats. It's very warm and it's very comfortable and it's just great for the winter time. But without further ado, let's get straight into the tools and materials. So there's a bunch of tools that you're going to need. Here's a list of everything where you can buy them and their prices. If you want a detailed list of every tool, you can check in the video description for a link. Now for the materials, you're going to need a half a yard of fabric to make pockets, two eyelets to add holes in the waistband, a shoestring long enough to go around the waist area, a pair of pants that fits you well, and the sweater that you want to customize. The first thing we're going to do is remove the sleeves. There's two ways you can do this. You can either use a pair of scissors or a seam ripper. It doesn't matter how you decide to do it, just make sure it's a clean cut. When you're done, you should end up with two sleeves and a body piece. Now we're going to cut off the top half of the sweater. But before we do that, we need to figure out how much of the sweater we need to cut off. We need to start by measuring out our leg length. Use a measuring tape to measure from your waist down to your foot. Now take your measurement and minus the length of the two sleeves. Whatever length is left, you're going to use that for the body piece. Get your straight edge ruler, measure out the length, and cut off the excess material. You should end up with something like this. Next we're going to remove the ribbed material on the bottom of the sweater. Like earlier, you can either use scissors or the seam ripper to remove the ribbed material. Now we are going to slim the body piece to our waist size. You want to get your measuring tape and measure your waist length. Take that measurement and then divide it in half. That will be your new waist measurement. Now go back to your body piece, turn it inside out, and mark off the new length. You can add pins to both sides as a reference. This is totally optional. Then you want to take it to your sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch to slim the sides. You can then use scissors to cut off the excess material. Now that we slimmed the sides, we can now add pockets. Before we start, we want to figure out how big we want the opening of the pocket to be. A standard length would be 5 inches, but you can make it bigger or smaller if you would like. Once you figure out how big you want the opening to be, now we can start. First we are going to seam rip the sides of the body piece. Measure 1 inch from the top, add a pin, then measure out your pocket length and add another pin. Repeat this for the other side. Now you can use your seam ripper to open the seam in between the two pins. If you did everything correctly, it should be like this. Next we're going to cut out the fabric for the pocket. Grab the fabric you want to use, have the right side of the fabric showing, grab the end of the fabric and fold it over for a good length. Then you want to fold it over one more time. Make sure you fold it over enough so we can cut out our pocket length. Now grab your marking tool and your ruler. Start by marking out the pocket length. With the pocket length, you want to freehand draw a shape like this. Then afterwards, you can cut out the pocket pieces. Once you're done, you should end up with four pocket pieces. Next, we're going to sew on the pockets. Starting with this pocket pair, take one of the pieces and flip it over onto its backside. Line it up in between the two pins and pin it into place. Here's how it should look. Once you're done with one side, flip the body piece over it and repeat the same process for the other piece. When you finish pinning the pocket pair, this is what it should look like on the front and the back of the body piece. Repeat this step for the other side. When you're done with all the pinning, it should look like this. Now you want to take it to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch along each pocket piece. Make sure not to sew both layers but one layer at a time. Next we're going to flip the pocket pieces to the wrong side of the body piece. Iron them down and pin them into place. Start by turning the body piece inside out. Then you want to bring each pocket piece out from the right side of the body piece to the wrong side of the body piece. Then you want to fold it over like this. Then use your iron to crease the fold. After you crease the fold, you want to pin it down. Here's how it should look after you're done with everything. Then you want to take it to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch along the pinned area. Next we're going to close up the pocket. All you need to do is match up both pocket pieces and pin them together. Here's how the pinning should look. 
Now take it to your sewing machine and do a zigzag or overlock stitch along the pinned area. Next we're going to separate the bottom part of the body piece to create two leg holes. With your body piece inside out, you want to grab your pair of pants and place it right over. Use the crotch area of the pants as a reference and place pins. Here's how the pinning around the crotch area should look. Depending on your pair of pants and all these other different factors, it may look different or the same. Now take it to your sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch below the pinned area. After you finish sewing the area, you can cut off the excess material with your pair of scissors or rotary cutter or whatever you want to use and you should end up with two leg holes. Next we're going to sew the sleeves onto the two leg holes. With the body piece inside out, you want to have the sleeves right side up. You want to insert the sleeves so the cuff part goes in first. Then you want to pin together the end of the sleeve to the leg hole. Here's an example of how the pinning should look on both legs. Now take it to your sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch along the pinned area. Once you're done sewing on the sleeves, you can turn the jogger sweats inside out to see if everything looks good. Now if you see something odd or just something looking out of place, you can go back and restitch the area just like this in this diagram and then it should fix the problem. Next we're going to add eyelets to the waistband. Lay the waistband out like this so the seams are on both ends. Then you want to add a midpoint pin through the top layer of the waistband. After you do that, you can open up the waistband. With a measuring tape, measure 1 to 2 inches away from the middle and create a hole big enough for your eyelet. After you create the hole, place your eyelet in it, then use your eyelet tool to set it in place. Repeat this one more time for the other eyelet. Here's how the waistband should look after you finish setting them. Next we're going to add the shoelace. Put one end of the shoelace through one of the eyelets and bring the other end around the waistband and through the second eyelet hole. Here's how it should look when you're done. Now we can close up the bottom of the waistband. All you need to do is add vertical pins along the waistband so it's easier to sew. Take it to your sewing machine and do either a zigzag or straight stitch to close up the waistband. Make sure to push the shoelace upwards so you don't accidentally sew it. Last thing to do is reattach the waistband. Take your waistband and flip it inwards like this. Then bring it over the waistline of the jogger sweats. You want to center the waistband so the eyelets are at the midpoint of the sweats and proceed to pin it along the waistline. Here's how the pinning should look. Now take it to your sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch along the pinned area. Once you're done with all that, you can try on your new pair of jogger sweats. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section below. But anyways, thanks for watching guys. This is Ken and you daily and remember to keep it daily. Peace.